I've always had an affinity for the 80s and I attribute it to my happy childhood. Um, I think about when I first discovered my love of music, the first concert I went to, which was Whitney Houston at a place called Poplar Creek outside of Chicago. And it's all very nostalgic for me and I think that's really what shaped my uh, musical pursuits. And when I was young, I never really pursued music seriously or even you know, as a serious hobby. And it's partially because I couldn't read music and I hated piano lessons. Um, but it wasn't until I got older that I realized musicians are usually one or two flavors. Either they can read music and they, they sight read really well and that's like magic to me, or they hear music and they feel it and they can play it. And some of those people that do that also supplemented their skills with professional training too. And again, it wasn't until I was older that I thought I wasn't going to let these uh, self-imposed rules prevent me from bringing some of my creative visions to life. It's a one for the money, two for the show. Ready now, go, go, go now, don't you step on my deli shoes. <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> my process for creating music usually starts with a melody and sometimes a bass line in my head, and then I sit down in front of a keyboard when I'm able to and try to pluck out the different chord structure and then figure out what key it's in. And then typically parts of the song, such as the bridge, will come later using chords that are within that same key. Oh, and sometimes if I think of a melody in the middle of night or I'm not in front of a keyboard, I'll hum it into my phone just to figure it out later. Because I love the 80s so much, I wanted to create music that was a nod to that time, but didn't necessarily sound like it came right from the 80s. So I like to have this juxtaposition, not only in my music, but even in my artist branding of new and retro. So for example, on my social media, I have a photo of me putting a Bitcoin into an old style piggy bank, or I love the fact that, you know, there are jelly shoes all over the place, but it's a modern twist with a stiletto. I love all of that stuff because it's so nostalgic. When creating music that has a nod to the 80s but also incorporates a more modern sound, I think back to uh, the times of when this famous keyboard was used. It was called the Yamaha DX7. If you look at videos from that time and live musicians, the keyboard is you could usually see Yamaha DX7 on the back and it had these sounds that are very reminiscent of the 80s. So if you think of songs like Hungry Eyes by Eric Carmen or Didn't We Almost Have It All by Whitney Houston, I love those chimey bells and I usually incorporate those types of sounds within my music, but then also try to incorporate modern drums or modern guitars. I, again, I just love the, the composition of the new and the retro and I really feel that it rounds out my vision as an artist. It's supposed to be, my dog has fleas. <laughs> the old cartoons, everybody remember that?